everybody. Thanks for coming to our talk today on curing insecure container images. My name is Eric Smalling. I'm a senior developer advocate here at Sneak. Uh, I have a developer background. I've been around uh, Docker and Kubernetes for many, many years. And I'm joined today with Seifet Kamadov from Red Ventures. Why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Hey, everyone. My name is Seifet Kamadov. I'm an engineer here at Red Ventures. Been here for about two and a half years almost. Um, started my engineering career actually three years ago. So kind of new in the game. Awesome. Let's talk a little bit about what we're going to go over today. Uh, we're going to start with uh, a discussion about insecure Docker images and the tooling and processes you can use to get to get away from that. And then we're going to get into what Docker's tools offer as far as supporting your efforts to shift security left in your pipelines and support a DevSecOps methodology. And then we're going to take all of that and we're going to turn it into, you know, how do you scale that up uh, using image pipelines and other techniques. So to get started here at Sneak, we, we uh, recently uh, released our 2021 State of Cloud Native Application Security Report. That's a mouthful. Uh, it's based on surveys we did of hundreds of companies deploying cloud native applications. Some of the key findings we had were that 60% of the people surveyed are deploying production in containers, which is great. Uh, that actually pops up to 78% if you include serverless deployments. Over half of them, however, have experienced incidents related to misconfigurations or unpatched vulnerabilities in their cloud native apps. We did see though that when automation comes in, companies that automate their pipelines are twice as likely to implement security testing. And almost three quarters of those that implement high levels of automation say they see in um, security related fixes are able to be deployed in an average of less than a week. A third of them actually say they can do it in less than a day. So given all that, uh, we want to talk today about how security testing automation, you know, from that survey, we can see how important it is. We want to talk about how that drives a culture of uh, security and empowers DevSecOps. And to do that, I'm going to hand the floor back over to Seifat, who's going to talk about how Red Ventures uh, addresses this with Docker image security. So just to give a little overview about Red Ventures, um, Red Ventures is a portfolio of brands, just like Helpline, The Points Guy, Bankrate, that empower people to make confident decisions about the things that matter to them. Here at Red Ventures, we heavily use containers for different workloads and different applications that we're um, developing. And um, we, since, that kind of environment is growing within Red Ventures. We want to come up with a solution that's super scalable and that can give us insight into the, the security of our container images. Before we dive into how we kind of approach scaling container security here at RV, I wanted to kind of go over just a bunch of, uh, a, a few standard best practices that you can use to avoid building insecure images. One of the most important ones I would say is to keep the base images small. A lot of uh, images out there tend to have a lot of general system libraries and utilities that you may not need for your actual application. So trying to find something that's very lightweight and secure, like an Alpine based image, for example, will allow you to keep the, to minimize your attack surface within your images. Another important thing is after determining our images is to make sure to validate the, the authentic, authenticity of these images. It's, uh, we want to make sure that you're not uh, pulling in images from the like, untrusted vendors, sources, and we want to make sure that your images are coming from a validated source. We can, we can do so by enabling something called Docker Content Trust. This can, uh, allows you to make sure that the images that you're pulling are actually signed and coming from trusted sources. Another great way to avoid building insecure images is to have some kind of tool that allows you to actually regularly scan your images or scan them as you're developing them. Um, something like Sneak, for example, you can kind of leverage that to uh, scan your images locally and find any vulnerabilities that you may need to remediate. Another great thing is using linting tools. And these tools uh, allow you to just follow best practices when you're building your actual Docker file. 
as well as just coming up with consistent standards for your team that, that can follow. It also uh, detects any misconfigurations, any errors that you may have, any, any bugs within your file that may potentially cause issues later on. Least privileged access is also an important thing to keep in mind when building your images. Um, we, we don't want to be executing containers using um, your root user. Um, some things that can kind of lead to privilege escalation if you do so, if you're having containers that have actual root user in production. Uh, to minimize exposure, it's good to create dedicated users and groups for your actual images or your containers. And last but not least, um, just staying up to date with the different images and dependencies that you're using within your application, within your containers. Um, a good thing that can help here is actually, like I mentioned, like those different scanning tools that you may find or may have that can kind of work for your environment. These different tools can definitely allow you to keep up to date with all the different things that are going on and just um, uh, with the security updates and, and things like that. So even though um, we follow all these different best practices, we still need a way to audit our images as we develop them and release them. And that's where Docker Scan comes in. Docker Scan is a tool which allows you to identify your vulnerabilities in your Docker images and provides you with recommendation on how to remediate them. This is also powered by the Sneak Engine. So every time, anytime you're using this tool to actually scan your images, it is using Sneak under the hood and giving you the different remediations and recommendations for your images. The good thing about this tool is that it uh, shifts security left. So this allows developers to apply security testing as a part of their um, everyday workflows. And instead of uh, keeping that as like an afterthought. So it also helps um, implement these workflows as early as possible in your SDLC. So whenever you're kind of beginning to develop an application, you can kind of have these types of tools to keep in mind as you're kind of developing, developing them. So another thing with this is just it being convenient. You have like, especially if you're working on Dockerized environment, right? You're using things like Docker build, Docker push, using all these different commands and tools where this is just another addition to that. So after you build, just run a Docker scan. Hey, like, do you have any vulnerabilities? We can, if you can remediate them and then kind of um, go ahead and uh, release or push them to like whatever register of your choice, right? So it makes it really convenient, everything in just one tool instead of having managing multiple different tools. It also gives you a sense of confidence in your applications just because you're, you're allowing yourself to actually do the security testing, find the vulnerabilities, remediate them, and just minimizing your actual attack surface and just giving yourself and your team and your application a lot of confidence um, in what you're actually releasing as well as the consumer as well, knowing that you did your best to actually secure your application. And last but not least, um, a great thing about this tool is actually really configurable. There's a lot of different things you can do with it, like setting different um, different outputs and recommendations and having the ability to kind of filter by different severity. So it's a very configurable tool that you can kind of leverage in many different ways. And now we can actually kind of go into a demo to showcase how this tool actually works. The way we use this tool is just simply running a Docker scan and then choosing an image um, that you have locally. So in this case, I'm going to be scanning our, this 1.6 Alpine image going. So what we can do is just specify your image and then my image should be called DockerCon and we can do 1.6 Alpine. And then literally that's the simplest way you can actually initiate this command and it will start scanning the actual image and the other dependencies within that and give you an output of the different vulnerabilities or if anything, like anything that it finds. So in this case, we're actually using the most secure version of 
this um, of this image. There's nothing found in this one specifically. But what we can do is we can actually run a scan on a different image with actual vulnerabilities to kind of show the output. So what I'm going to do is choose 1.14 as our image. Um, I have everything kind of pre-built here, so I'm not going to build it right now. Um, so if we kind of scan this here, it's going to show us the different vulnerabilities that he finds for this specific image. So as we can see here, he found seven issues. And if we scroll up, you can actually see the, the different uh, vulnerabilities that he found and also like the different versions that these vulnerabilities are fixed in. So you can actually upgrade them individually if you wanted to. And as we can see here, we have the medium severities as well as low. Another thing that we can do is supply it with our Docker file. And that's when it will start giving us um, base image recommendations. So it can give you an image, maybe like 1.16, for example, that's the latest one that has no vulnerabilities. Like it'll, it'll give you a bunch of recommendations that you can actually use. So like I mentioned here, it's giving us this recommendation. And so we can use this and this image has zero vulnerabilities and Another thing that we can actually do is um, use different types of uh, like filters for the severity. So we can do something like provide it with a high severity, and this is only going to output high severity vulnerabilities. So if you're actually using um, like a CI pipeline, for example, right, and you want to only fail on high severity items, you can actually um, set that filter and it will only be returning high severity items. So this is a great way to actually do this in local development while you're actually, you know, building your applications as well as in your CI uh, pipeline where like, hey, um, we were using this 1.14 image and then we actually did a scan and it gave us this recommendation and it'll fail a pipeline and then tell us to upgrade that. Another thing we can do is actually um, output it as JSON. So this definitely helps when doing this CI integration. Um, it'll, it'll return the same, same information just in a JSON format. So it'll be a different output, as you can see here. And the vulnerabilities actually have the, the fixed inversion here. So we can actually run JQ against that. And then we can say like, hey, like find anything that's, um, does not have an empty nearest fixed end, right? So like if we have a vulnerability that has a fixed end version, that's something that we can actually fix and take action on. Um, we can actually run this command here and it'll give us the output. Um, and so it says true. So we have vulnerabilities that we can actually remediate, right? And we can actually use this in your pipelines. You can fail them with a little scripting here and to make sure that you're not actually releasing vulnerable images and applications. Now, that's the actual tool for Docker Scan. Now we can kind of um, speak about Docker Hub and Docker Desktop, and I'll uh, pass it back over to Eric. Awesome, that's cool. That tip with the JQ is really cool. So you see the Docker has added built-in container vulnerability scanning to help your teams catch issues before they're exploited, right? So first of all, Docker added scanning to Docker Hub registry for anyone with a Docker team or pro level account. As soon as you push your image to Docker Hub, you can automatically scan it and it'll let you know what it finds right in the UI. You can drill in into the scan results and see exactly what vulnerabilities there are. And then you can go farther if you want to into the descriptions with, you can see severity levels, details, and other things to help you prioritize which issues uh, you might want to address first. As you just saw, uh, Docker also added container image vulnerability scanning to the CLI under the Docker scan command, which that's been available for Docker desktop users on Windows and Mac since uh, last fall. Right now on your workstation, you can run the command, get results and remediation device uh, advice <laughs> and fix issues before you even commit to your source control. What you might not be aware of though, is that the same Docker scan functionality is now available for Linux. Docker CE for all supported distributions of Linux now includes the scan subcommand and can be used in the same manner as the Docker desktop version. This is great news for those who develop on their own Linux workstations 
or Linux servers that might be managed by others. As long as you have the latest build of Docker CE, you can start using Docker Scan right now. Now, let's talk a little bit about why I'm so excited about these built-in scanning capabilities. Um, as developers, we've always cared about the security of our apps. The move to DevOps over the last decade or so is evidence to this, as we started to take manual builds, tests, and deploy functions and, and automate them. Docker came along and accelerated everything by providing standardized ways to build and package our deliverables. And they democratized, democratized all the technologies needed to feed our ever increasing need for these fast pipelines. Unfortunately, application and container security teams and the tools they used weren't always invited to our DevOps party. They often stayed as late term gates in our pipelines. And when issues were found, they ended up pulling the and on cord and you know, stopping the line long after the build was constructed. Um, this causes a hit to your velocity while we developers have to work on analyzing the reports and, and remediating the vulnerabilities, or worse, we ignore them and we just put it out there to get it out there on time. Now, this is not the security team's fault. They're just too often not being involved soon enough to be fully effective in this fast-paced, continuous delivery-driven world. Tools like Docker Scan running right on the developer's desktop in the developer's workflow move security about as far left on the pipeline as possible. Security teams can now be engaged with the developers the moment the vulnerability is added to the code. Automation like Docker CLI scan and Docker hub scanning provides info needed for developers to proactively fix issues and pull security in when they have questions rather than throwing their code or image over the wall and hoping it passes um, you know, through those uh, late gates. It breaks down team silos and empowers both developers and security experts to meet the velocity that their business teams demand. So you've seen some anecdotal examples of using container scanning, and I've talked a lot about how these tools can help out. Now let me hand back to Seifat to talk about how Red Ventures actually applies these strategies at large scale. The way we approach or solve the container security here at RV is by two ways. First, being our container image pipeline, and the second, our central scanning process. What this allows us to do is create a set of images that are up-to-date, secure, um, recommended, uh, that our teams can actually use. So we actually leverage Sneak to monitor these set of images that we've created. And these images are located in our GitHub repo. And thanks to the automatic, um, PRs that Sneak is able to create. Um, it notifies us whenever we um, there's a vulnerability found within our images. So when whenever that happens, we get uh, we take that PR. We know you can merge it or whatever, and then we'll push a new push a new image out and replace the vulnerable one that we had previously. And in doing so, this process is able to create PRs on other repos and where, where, where these images are actually located. So if there are teams using these images and there's a fix found, uh, we'll, pu we'll push out the fix and then we'll create a PR on these different repos with those, the old images. So this allows us to kind of keep up to date with all the images and kind of staying secure across the entire organization here. And this allows us just to kind of create a centralized place and provide these set of images to teams that may not know what kind of image to use. So this allows you to kind of um, give you like a good base start on your actual applications. And to kind of uh, give you a visual about the actual pipeline, we can kind of see here that we have the central GitHub repository, right? A container image pipeline that's kind of leveraging Sneak to do the monitoring like I mentioned. So whenever we find these detect these vulnerabilities, it will uh, merge that PR release the new image, push them into ECR and Artifact, which is what we use here at RV, and then create those PRs on different repositories um, to update the, the previous vulnerable images and then kind of notify the teams. So this definitely helps us providing secure base images, but it doesn't really give us insight into the actual final image that was created on top of these images, right? So our second way, that we kind of solve this is by Flare. And Flare is our central scanning process. And this is also leveraging the Sneak CLI to do our scans of images. 
but it can also be replaced with any other scanning tool such as like Docker scan or some other thing that you may find. Um, so this process is actually scanning all of the images within our organization um, when it, whenever they're updated and created. So that's about like 1300 images per day. It has support for multiple registries. So currently we're using ECR and Artifactory, like I mentioned, but we can easily implement some other ones. And this just allows us to service findings and help us drive remediation efforts. And to kind of briefly talk about how we actually created this process, um, I want to give an overview of um, just our environment here at RevVentures. And we are currently uh, in, uh, primarily an AWS shop, so we're mostly using ECR to store our images. Like, but I mentioned, we use Artifactory as well. And with our AWS environment, we have a lot of accounts, like probably over 400 accounts. So we need a scalable solution that can scan these images across all these accounts, as well as account for different registries that's not within AWS, right? So what we developed here is a system that's able to do that. This uh, system is actually built alongside another system we have that helps us actually scan everything and it's called floodlight events. And this is just an event, like an event bus that is able to receive all of the different cloud shell events that we have here, uh, like within our AWS org. So whenever like we have pushes to like ECR, for example, and updating images, we actually receive these update events. And then we actually run this process against that. So like if you to picture in your mind, like for example, I push a image or update an image in our ECR repo, the actual event will come into the system, launch, one of the two different scanners. So it can be ECR artifactor, depending um, which one it is. In this case, it will be ECR. We'll launch that scanner, do like a Docker pull, pull the image down, run the actual scanning tool. Um, and then that will, the findings will get shipped to sneak. And then we will actually get the project ID from that scan, ship it to a, a queue, right, SQS. And then we'll have just a Lambda function to actually um, queries that project ID, makes sure like, hey, is there any like actionable vulnerabilities that uh, that were found in this image? And if there is, we just send it back to follow events and then that will send it over to our, like our Jira service or notification service or whatever else kind of service that you may want to hook that data up to. And, and to kind of account for different registries, we have that describer process, which actually um, helps us do ad hoc scanning. So, instead of doing like a scan specific for ECR or specific artifact, we can actually run against different um, types of um, registry. So, and that'll get shipped to back to those two different scanners. And then we can actually append a different type of scanner to do like Docker Hub or something like that, like something else. So it makes it really easy to integrate different registries and it's very scalable as well, just because everything here is serverless, right? So this, everything's kind of managed by AWS. So we don't have to worry about any like scaling or anything like that. So you just kind of add the event sources and the scanning process will kind of take care of everything else. And so this is how we actually kind of solve the container security here at scale and it's been working great. That's awesome. I really like this diagram because it shows how simply you can scale this up, like you said. Just add another blue block for if you're going to use Docker Hub or if you want to use some other um, registry, not, not a problem. So very cool. So to wrap up, we talked about you know the nitty gritty of how do you make sure the individual images you're creating are secure by checking for vulnerabilities with scanning tools uh, like the built-in Docker scan. Um, mentioned that you know Docker scan is now available on Linux, which makes it really useful, especially in CI pipelines where you've got Linux-based agents. You don't have to install any additional tools if you've got the Docker CLI available to you. And then finally, we saw you know how to apply all of that theory at scale and make sure that all your developers have a central place to go to get images that they know have been vetted by um, you know your 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 company. So before we uh, part today. We submit additional resources if you want to uh, screenshot this, or uh, if you want to wait, we'll be publishing these slides. Uh, watch our Twitter feeds. I'll put the, our uh, contact info back up in a second. Um, and I'll be publishing these slides within the next uh, 24 hours after the conference. 
Um, but if you want to know more about uh, the stats I gave up front, the app security report is this, this bottom one here. That's a very uh, comprehensive report we just put out. It's free. There's no registration wall or anything to get to it. Um, and we have other resources here. If you're interested in looking into how Sneak and Docker integrate, we have a good workshop where you can get hands-on and, and walk through it. Um, and everything we've been talking about today, um, you can do for free with Docker Scan. You are limited to the number of scans you can do, but if you go sign up for a free Sneak account, when you connect that to your Docker Scan, uh, there's an authorization uh, or command it'll feed you. Uh, you get a ton more. I think you get like 100 scans. I, don't quote me on the number, but you get a ton more scans available for you all for free. There is no charge for it. Um, and uh, other than that, uh, I think that covers it. So here again is our Twitter accounts. I'm also on LinkedIn. Just look for my name. I'm, I'm probably one of the few Eric Smallings out there. So feel free to contact us there. And thank you again so much for uh, attending.